Scheiße. So, in 2021 or 2022, definitely during lockdown, my friend Louise sent me an invitation to the Skip to the End Facebook group. This group contained anything to do with uh, Spaced, Edgar Wright, Jessica Hines, Simon Pegg, Pete Serafinowicz, Nick Frost, etc, etc, and any of the films or TV shows they've been in. Why am I talking about Spaced and why is Spaced in my life? Well, back in 2005, just after starting university and studying media technology in Hull, I was at that tender age of 20. Yes, 20. And listening to a lot of classic rock. I was ready to take on the student lifestyle when I suddenly get a phone call from my girlfriend who dumps me over the phone and says, you're just not emo enough for me. Then all I could do was cry. I was crying in the street, crying at student parties. When one day I was sat on the bench Crying and still looking at my ex-girlfriend's photo. I meet a quirky character and now a friend called Robbie. He walked over and said, Mate, have you seen Spaced? I replied with, No, I've never heard of it, so I'm shit. It's so funny and you will relate to it in this current state. And so he kindly handed me his copy of the special edition DVD box set. And I went home that night and after watching it three times through, I fell in love with Spaced too. I was hooked. But after only knowing there was 14 episodes, my emo cycle started again. However, I gave Robbie his copy back and I went straight to Amazon and bought myself the same box set. Because special features and, you know, documentaries and all the extra stuff. On the front of this particular box set, there is an image of Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines as an illustration depicting their main characters. Before I get into more depth of this story, and for those who haven't seen Spaced, here are a few little details about the show's two main heroes. Simon Pegg's character is Tim Bisley, an amateur comic book artist who is dumped by his girlfriend and then just moves into a flat with a girl he hardly knows, Daisy Steiner, played by Jessica Hines. Daisy, after graduating with a third, she is a lazy on the door journalist who just wants the work to come to her, land in her lap. However, she's one lazy bastard. So like, even if it did, would she even do any of it? Back to Simon's character then, Tim, a struggling comic book artist who's hoping that one day he eventually works for Damien Knox. He's the CEO of Darkstar Comics and a massive wanker. During the show, we see Tim sketching on his illustrations, clearly implying his eagerness and, you know, him wanting to become a professional artist. For the show, these stunning illustrations were actually created by two superb 2000 AD artists, Jim Murray and Jason Brashill. And Jim Murray is the one who is responsible for the artwork on the special edition box set. Skip to the end, I hear you cry. Well, no, because recently on the Skip to the End group, a happy and excitable fan, Guy Holland, posted a picture of his copy of the special edition box set, which said, Charity shop find for a quid. Now I own two of these. And as we all know, we can post our comments. And one particular comment by a member said, I own the artwork that was scanned for this box set. Just a casual comment with like huge impact. Everyone's like, wow, yeah, cool. This is amazing. Um, 100% like to you and you know, congrats. You can imagine it, right? Let's, let's set a scene. Some random pub and you're just casually having a chat with a local punter and he looks at your phone and says, I have the original artwork for this. And you're left stunned. And he just takes a mouthful of his beer, a drag of his cig, and walks off as if, like, nothing happened. Just leaving you in disbelief. You know, because you always believe people's stories in pubs, don't you? This member's comment didn't say anything else. 
Like, for example, if it was for sale, copies available, or if he was the artist. Nothing. I comment saying, that's superb. Sell me a print. I was only joking, because I can't ask for the original now, can I, really? No reply right away, so I carry on with my day, just, like, doing whatever. Later on, I check Facebook again, and I see a friend request. I double-check to see if it's the same person who posted in the group, and it was. A gentleman called Jeremy Dowsett. I accept. I check out his Facebook. I see he's from Romford. <laughs> so I send a welcoming DM and say, Jeremy, hi. Why don't you piss off back to Romford where you belong? He replied with laugh out loud and said hi back and he continued writing back to me. Hi Rob, I don't live there anymore. I'm now living in Canada. In my head I'm thinking, alright, yeah, dodgy account, whatever. Why has this guy added me? He's a bot, you know. But then again he did get accepted into the skip to the end page, so he must be real. Anyway, he continued. Rob, give me your address, pay the postage and the artwork is yours. I'm like... What? What What the f***? I, I, I can have the original? Yes. I want a fan to frame it and cherish it. It's been stuck in a box for years now. In fact, I did try to sell it on eBay because I was financially struggling at the time, but the eBayer never paid me, so it went back into the box. Um, I was, I was pretty gobsmacked. Uh, because all I wanted... Uh, um, I cheekily asked for a print of, as a joke because... I didn't think I actually would get anything, um, let alone like a friend request or a reply or this conversation. I was gobsmacked. I then held back a bit as I wasn't ready to give out my details just yet. I continued typing away and asked, Jeremy, how come you have the original artwork? Well, Rob, Jim and I used to work together at a company in Montreal, Canada called A2M. No joke, A2M. Hehe, <laughs> right. Okay, so... A2M, right, for, the, for those of you who don't get that joke, it's, it's, it means ass to mouth. So imagine that, like two colleagues heading to their new place of work, they stand outside the entrance, look up, see the company name, turn to each other and end up laughing like a couple of twats. Jim and I had a discussion one time over a coffee at work and I asked Jim to tell me about himself and what work he'd done. Well, Jeremy, where, where do I begin? Ah, oh, yeah, here's a good one and you'll like this. Back in the 90s, I got a job working alongside Jason Brashell, and we created the artwork for the TV show Spiced, which aired on Channel 4 around 1999. You know, the one with Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines and that. It was great. He told me he knew Edgar Wright, but I can't remember from where. Maybe they were colleagues, flatmates or just good friends. However, they knew one another. Back to Jim. Thanks. I was also creating various illustrations for other companies too. And because I was a struggling artist back then, Edgar got the green light directing Spiced, and they just said, hey Jim, do you fancy helping out and providing illustrations for the show? I agreed, and it was great. Currently, as a sideline project, I'm working for Blizzard, creating paintings for them as well. It's great. Oh, and also I work for 2008 in DC Comics, drawing their Batman, Judge Dredd, and other various characters. That was great. After a few years working together at A2M, Jim left the company and went to work for various other companies. We just lost contact. Yeah, bye Jim. Goodbye. Nice to, uh, nice to work with you, Jim. Bye. All the best in your adventures, Jim. Bye. Yeah, bye. And suddenly the clouds part and a mythical dragon appears from behind them. It's a phenomenal size. Not even an army of ogres and orcs could kill it. Jim yields his sword from behind and takes on the dragon that's wishing to eat and kill him. The dragon breathes a plume of fire. Jim swings his shield from over his head to protect him. The fire reflects his titanium shield of Titonia. The dragon is now angry and finds another way to kill this relentless mortal human. Jim runs around the forest, jumping as high and mighty and lands a blow of his sword into the shoulder of the beast. Blood splurts out and the dragon is weak. As it limps, it falls and becomes vulnerable. Jim continues running and runs to the cliff edge and leaps into the air. Perfectly timing his arc, he aims for the neck of the wounded dragon and slices its head clean off with one impressive blow. An instant fatality. 
Jim breathes heavily as blood is spurting from the dragon's fatal wound. A proud kill. My gang, I bring good news. The dragon. The dragon, sir. The dragon of Nipturnia has been slayed. We are free. Bring them to me. I must meet this slayer. Bring me the slayer. Tell me your name, dragon slayer. Jim. I am King Archibald. King Archibald? I... King Archibald. Archie... Boob. Ah, Boob. King Archie Boob. I got it. Yeah, King Archie Boob. That's right. That's it. Right. Jim, you are one brave soul. I and the people of this kingdom are in great debt to you for slaying the Dragon of Nipturnia. As King, I ask you to kneel before me, and I now forward the position to you as I appoint thee as the new King of Planet Boob. And as the new king of Planet Boo, your duties are to protect the planet, which is full of topless, beautiful women. These natives have sworn a vow of making sweet love to their kings over many centuries. Planet Boo is now yours to rule until the day you die. All hail King Jimmy Boo! Jim became their new king, the new king of Planet Boo. And every single beautiful woman was topless, cheering and kissing each other and bathing each other and rubbing oil on each other and licking cream off each other and baggy nipples poke. Obviously none of that happened with Jim. I mean, I appreciate Tom doing these artworks, but, you know, he's he's got to concentrate. He's really got to concentrate. Jeremy told me that Jim ended up working for Blizzard. As Jeremy said before, right, he couldn't remember how Jim and Edgar knew each other. And with the power of the internet, I had to find out about their friendship um, for the facts of this story. Because in the past, I've been fortunate enough to have Edgar Wright reply to my tweets. So that was where I headed right away. Twitter, now X. So I X'd. And I sent a tweet to Edgar and asked if he lived with Jim when he was creating Space. You know, just just nice and simple. Nothing. No replies. Totally understandable. He has a lot of followers. However, move on a month, and this gem landed in my Instagram lap. I see Edgar Wright had just posted something about Soho Theatre, Dean Street. He put a comment saying of how he loved this uh, particular show called uh, The Amazing Banana Brothers by Bill O'Neill and his brother. Obviously, he went to see a play in Soho, right? So I comment. After that, did you go to a swinging late night coffee house to discuss the play at length before retiring to a jazz bar to listen to elaborate xylophone music, talk about the meaning of life until it was time to catch the last tube home? He replied, I wish. Maybe you did Tim's plan instead. Edgar still replied, maybe in my twenties, yes. Talking of your twenties, did you live with Jim Murray whilst writing Spaced? Hence why he did the artwork for Spaced. See, now I, I, I put writing Spaced. I, I meant to put directing Spaced. I kind of fumbled because I was sending Instagram replies to Edgar Wright. <laughs> so anyway, he corrected me. No, I did not. We went to art college at the same time, but we never lived together. And Simon and Jess wrote Spaced. I directed and script edited. <laughs> so, Awesome or what? Uh, Thank you, Edgar, for replying, and I hope you enjoyed the play. It's a shame it didn't have a swear word in the title. Back to the messenger conversation, then, that Jeremy and I had. Jim painted Jessica and Simon for the DVD cover, which was scanned to produce the DVD art for the special edition box set. When I bought my first house, I ended up with the original as a housewarming gift. And back in, probably 2004, I asked him to sign it for me. He got out a gold pen and I sat there and watched him sign it. It was great because Jim just turned up and said, Here, I have this. I've moved five times since then and it's remained in a box that I took with me every time I moved house. It's yours now.
If you give me an address, I'll send it to you. So again, he seemed adamant to uh, send it. Okay, right, so what a story. I asked Jeremy um, what he did for a living, and he said he works for a very large computer games firm, um, developing games for Xbox and PS4 and PC, and he's a he's a computer game development manager, um, and he looks after a team of level designers and concept artists, like I say, making games for the consoles and PC. I'm like, okay, I need to check him out, right? So I did. I look on IMDB, and I see he has credits on there of the game he was telling me about. I I search LinkedIn and see he has some credits there as well, um, and it's true to his word. Uh, so now I believe his surreal tale. Yeah, it seems weird that I did all this like background check, but it's Facebook at the end of the day. You don't know who's who, and people just creating fake profiles, so... You know, Jeremy, I hope I didn't offend you in any way. You wanker. I then proceeded to give him my address. He said, That's great, Rob. I'll send it out later today as I have to go to the post office and send something for my dad who still lives in the UK. He often sends me PG tips too. Later on, Jeremy contacts me again and says, I tell you what, Rob, don't pay me postage. I've written a letter for you with my request on how you can pay me. I'm like, right, okay. Dear owner, Jim gave this to me as a gift in 0405. I have moved it from house to house in all of that time. Please frame it and enjoy it. The cost to you? Give five pounds and a packet of Jaffa Cakes to a person in need. That's all. Signed, Jeremy. And so I did his request. So, as Jeremy's letter requested, he said, please give a person in need, a packet of Jaffa Cakes and a five pound note. So I'm gonna make three pack lunches. I'm gonna make three BLTs and put them in these bags. So already we've got some stuff in there. We've got a bar of chocolate, lager, Jeremy's request. We've got the Jaffa Cakes and a fiver stuffed in the top. There'll be a bag of crisps in here somewhere when I find them as well. And an apple. So Jeremy, I hope this fulfills your request and we'll, we'll shoot the, um, the footage today of uh, handing them out. I've got cooking to do. See you later. So I made it to a remem- oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Remembrance <laughs> Memoria. Yeah, and yeah. And I'm German. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was It'll a be good well, thing to well say that. Well, at home. <laughs> um, there's a gentleman over there who's got like load of medals. Um, so I'll go give him a hamper. How are you doing? Yeah, you all right, yeah. My name's Rob. Hi, Rob. So, saw your medals. Steve, mate. Oh, yeah. My girlfriend's over there. She's just doing some filming. Yeah. Uh, I've got a friend in Canada. Who's I've been there a yeah. times. He's given me a gift, right, over the last few months. He gave me a painting. And he said, Rob, and hand out, like, a hamper to anybody you want. So, <laughs> so that's <laughs> you making me cry. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> hey, 23 years in the army. Yeah. So we've put together. You've got a BLT in there, right? There's a packet. <laughs> packet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you making me cry. You've got. <laughs> there's a packet of Jaffa cakes in there. There's a fiver. There's some lunch. Oh, there's a beer. So you've obviously done a bit of service and looking after people. 23 so. years, man. There you are. And I love it. Yeah. So you're one of three that we're giving out some uh, some gifts out today. All right, but Steve was it? Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Man. So enjoy your sandwich. There's a beer in there as well. I work at a brewery. <laughs> you take it steady. Enjoy. Yourself. All right. See you later. All right. So, so he seemed happy. So thank you, Jeremy. Number one. All done. Found someone next. So that was, that was pretty successful. Uh, two people probably have got a full stomach, which is good. Just gonna head now to a theater in Brid. Yeah, so the, um, the theater is me- like kept going, uh, going from people who volunteer there. So 
the front of house are all volunteers, the actors are all volunteers, everyone is a volunteer. And this weekend um, they have someone coming from the West End, so she worked in different musicals in the West End. She was a main part in Phantom the Opera, I don't know how you say it in English. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. And um, but she played in Cats and, and different different ones. So um, she is there to give them some vocal vocal um, training. So what I'm going to do is with a fiver is just donate the fiver to the theatre, um, and anybody that's hungry can just eat the Jaffa cakes, I suppose, and stuff the face with what we've made them. See you at the theatre. Free booze though. <laughs> We are Bridlington Amateur Operatic and Dramatic Society, which was formed in Bridlington in 1909. Um, and in, during that period from 1909 right up to the end of 1999, Bay Odds performed in village halls at the Spa Theatre, rehearsed in homes, wherever we could, to put on plays and shows. But in 1999, we got the opportunity to buy an old factory in West Street, and we turned that factory into this beautiful theatre, which has took 23 years to, to actually get here and it's just a marvellous place to come. It's a bijou theatre, 83 seats, we produce musicals, pantomimes, drama and we even provide films and we do a dementia friendly film every, the first Monday in every month um, and it's just one lovely place to be. It's funded by our, the residents of Bridlington because they obviously buy our tickets but because we are run by volunteers um, we have no big overheads, so we can keep our tickets prices down to £12 for adults, £8 for children, which allows people to come to see the theatre. So the funding comes from the community, but also we get funding from the town council or the lottery or wherever to keep this place running. And we're always expanding, always making it better. So that's where it comes from. But the, the, the key is, it's the effort that's put in by the volunteers and the acting members. It's just absolutely a fantastic place to be. Fantastic. Um, well, Mike, with it, with it all being like funded within the community, I'm going to add you. Wow. This is, this is uh, five pound from, from Jeremy in, in Canada. Wow, so, that's go. fab. And this <laughs> money will actually buy biscuits for the dementia friendly film because we provide free biscuits and tea. That's where that will go, some ginger nuts. Thank you, Rob. Oh, you're welcome. Fantastic, no thank you. <laughs>
out of its uh, protective wrapper yet. I'll get it on a wall soon and admire its beauty. That's the original piece, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is on the DVD cover artwork. So just a few people I'd like to thank. Jesse, thank you for uh, supporting me with this and tolerating my silliness and um, pushing me to be uh, creative. Tom, who did all the artwork, you have put so much effort into doing all those. Your eagerness and you know your skills of your artwork, uh, extremely appreciated. Uh, and obviously it fits the theme with, with the artwork, of course. Sam and Peg and Jessica Hines for writing such a superb show back in the 90s. Jim Murray, of course, if you could view this video at any time or whatever, contact me and let me know your thoughts. I uh, hope you don't sue me. Writing you in as a dragon slaying boob king, I mean, might be quite good. I mean, I, I don't know these people. <laughs> I've never met Jim, I don't know who he is. It's been a fun project and it's given me the push to be creative. And this, this painting has is, is given me the, the, the push to do that. And of course, very much like to thank you, Jeremy, for giving me this incredible, beautiful gift. All just because I said on Facebook, wow, that's cool, sell me a print. And then, you know, we've chatted a few times and you obviously seem like a very generous type of person by some of the other things that you've told me that you've given out with regards to uh, photography and for people who need things, you know, you seem to be uh, willing to do that for people, which is very rare, obviously. Um, so yeah. A big, big thank you, um, and to anybody who watched this daft silly video, uh, much, much appreciated, very much appreciated. Um, go be creative, go have fun, live your life to the fullest, and yeah, just, just enjoy yourselves, have fun with your life. Catch you later, bye.